Hi, my name is James Gardner. I am the occupational therapist for the ALS clinic. Um, many people don't know what occup occupational therapy is or what we do. Uh, the goal of occupational therapy is to help patients maintain their independence for as long as possible, as well as improve their quality of life. As an OT, I will, I will try to get a clear picture of the situation at home and work environment to assess your needs, abilities, and problems, and then suggest ways to meet these needs and overcome problems. I can make equipment suggestions and help make adjustments at the home considering future needs. I'll also provide guidance and uh, education to caregivers so that they can provide support as needed. So as you come into the clinic, I will reassess skills uh, periodically and um, adjust the aids and adaptations as necessary. Uh, I will also teach energy conservation techniques which focus on doing the routines that are necessary and saving energy for more meaningful activities. And lastly, along with the PT, I can advise the patient on exercises that can possibly help maintain health for longer and increase quality of life. My overall goal is to help you do the things that are most important to you and come up with solutions to the challenges that you come up against in your day-to-day -day tasks. So with that said, about your day-to-day -day tasks, we're gonna look at some of the tools that are most commonly used by ALS, ALS patients to complete your ADLs or activities daily living, or just the things you do uh, on a day-to-day -day basis. So kind of going from right to left, we're looking at dressing, some fine motor adaptations, and also help with eating and holding on to things when you have a hard time with grip. So some of the things you might find are uh, this guy. This is a long handle shoehorn. So you're probably familiar with maybe what a shoehorn does and what it is. But what this does is allow you to be able to take your shoes off easier without having to bend too far down and also has a little easy, easy to hold grip to be able to do so. Along with that, we also have a dressing stick. Uh, you can see there's different shapes of hooks. You can put pants down with them, take them off of your feet. You can take socks off. You can take uh, shoes off with this as well as a hook. So you can use it um, if you YouTube or look online, it's a dressing stick. You'll find a lot of people come up with creative solutions using this to get a lot of the dressing tasks done. Um, oftentimes you'll see reachers. Uh, these are pretty easy to use reachers that allow you to be able to grip onto things that are on the ground or up above with pretty low resistance. You can hold on to things pretty well. Uh, it's nice to have a little grippy edge on these. They're not all created equal, so finding one that is sturdy and maybe investing a couple more dollars on one that is a little bit stronger would be good. Um, also with kind of the long-handled bunch, this is a long-handled sponge. Makes sense that you'll use this when you're bathing so you can reach those hard to reach places without having to do too much of uh, the motor movement needed to get those longer, longer and harder to reach places. Um, as we go forward, we're looking more at can some fine motor issues. So tying your shoes, it's a common problem that you can't tie your shoes. So what, they, what, often recommend, what we often recommend are these elastic shoelaces. So you put these and tie them in your shoes just like normal, but instead of having to tie your shoes, you leave them tied and you can lift the tongue just like you would maybe another slip-on shoe. Uh, works with most shoes that have laces. Um, uh, another tool that is often used is this button hook. Um, these are a little bit tricky to use. And so I, I always start with, when I, when I introduce these with the saying, is that maybe you should really consider what is most important to you. If it's super important that you can dress yourself and be independent as possible, then maybe use these devices to help yourself get dressed. But you have to decide kind of early on in ALS, what is more most important to you? Independence or having the energy and time to do more things that are more most important to you. So if dressing is not, not as a vital independence thing for you, then maybe ask someone to help you and use your energy and time somewhere else. These tools will allow you to be more independent, uh, but maybe for you, that's not the most important thing. But how this works is basically you thread, you can thread the button, button hook in and then pull it out. So you can just basically go in and out of the shirt buttons and using this to hold on to the buttons for you. Uh, it takes a little bit of maneuvering and sometimes if you have a little bit poor grip, it's still a little bit hard, but it can be a tool to kind of bridge you for those few months that maybe you, your hand control becomes a little bit too weak uh, to, to use. Along with that, uh, things like the easy key turner, this will hook onto any key, uh, like especially house keys, and allow it to be a bit more easier uh, grip that you can turn it without having to have really strong pinch strength. Uh, you just insert your key into the, little, into the little slot here and it makes your key a lot easier to hold. Um, an often uh, asked for adaptation is being able to, how do, I, how do I cut my fingernails and how do I do this on my own? Because holding the, holding the one side really small and keeping your finger in the other spot is difficult. So with this one, you can suction 
the um, fingernail clippers onto the table, it stays there for you. So all you have to do with one hand is just kind of keep your, keep your fingernail in there and then you can kind of use gross motor to, uh, to basically use to cut, cut your fingernails pretty easily without this moving around. You can also see this one has a little filing uh, pad on there as well. Uh, you can buy these online. You can make your own pretty easily with some epoxy and a little bit of uh, wood maybe, but uh, they're not that expensive to buy online if it's something that you're just wanting to do on your own and pretty, pretty easily. Like also you might see this is uh, a letter opener, so or anything that you might need to open, like a bag, things like that. So this gives you nice, easy to hold on to uh, bag opener or letter opener that is, lets you hook onto things and open them without too much of uh, fine motor. Um, these um, these pins are are pretty great. They're the pin again pins. Uh, look kind of maybe interesting for uh, for a pin, but what it allows you to do is kind of hook this onto your finger, and you can basically hold onto the pin without having any. Uh, grip at all. So you can do a lot of writing and some simple uh, writing with just using this kind of leverage over your finger to hold the pin in place. One of my uh, favorite tools for people who have some weak wrist, uh, some, especially in the uh, wrist extension, which is pretty common, are using these economy wrist supports. And so with this in place, you can uh, basically do a lot of our eating tasks and other fine motor tasks without a lot of effort. So what we do is we kind of put the, the bar over the top of our hand and we put it on like so. And then we can adjust this kind of the spine here on this. We can adjust that to be the angle that we want to keep our wrist. And you'll see inside, of, inside the hand here, there's a little slot that is allows you to put a toothbrush, a spoon, or uh, anything else that kind of is small, a stylus for an iPad, things like that. You can put it in there and you can hold on to things without having to have any hand function. It also keeps your wrist in a good position. If you do have some finger strength left, that you can still kind of put those fingers in a better position for function. Uh, it's lightweight um, and it can be used pretty efficiently uh, without a whole lot of setup uh, of need for support. Um, with that, I wouldn't wear this all the time. Uh, I'd probably use it while you're doing that functional activity that you're using it for. Similarly, there's this device called the Universal Cuff, uh, which has a similar slot. It's a little bit easier to put on, and if you don't have that wrist weakness, it's something that you can slip on to your hand. And then once again, Without having any hand function, you can hold a fork, you can hold a pen, a stylus, a toothbrush, a razor, all the things that can kind of fit in this little gap that's left in this universal cuff that really makes it so you don't have to have any grip strength in order to be able to hold on to things while you're doing those ADLs or doing those activities of daily living that you're wanting to do. It's cheap, easy to use, uh, and easy to take off and on for a caregiver who's helping you do those things. Um, another thing that is often used um, is this are these built up utensils, right? So they actually have utensils that they build up for you already um, and allow it for easier grip on your hold. And you also notice that it's bent, uh, kind of angled. It's an angled utensil. So what happens is when you get the food and you bring it up to your mouth, it's already in the position to get to you rather than having to do a lot more maneuvering with your shoulder or with your wrist. And so it makes it so you can really grasp on to a to any kind of food and get it up to you a little bit easier, which is what we're hoping for, just a little, making that task a little bit easier. Um, you can do, you can kind of do the same kind of twisting and angling with most any utensil. Some are more bendable than others. So if you find maybe a cheaper utensil, you can kind of bend your own and not have to buy the angled uh, utensil that you can buy online. One of my favorite eating adaptations is the rocker knife. Uh, the, night, the one thing I like about it is that it's super simple. It's not something that's going to look, um, going to take up a lot of space if you're going out to eat, uh, and you can use it with very little grip strength. And so, uh, what it does is you can put it kind of in your hand, and uh, if you have, you can have a little bit of grip strength there. And then, it, a lot of times, the part part with cutting is really trying to hold on to a knife as you're as you're cutting your food. It oftentimes will pop up out of your grip because you just don't have the grip strength to do that. This puts the weight of your hand and your arm on top of the food and you just rock back and forth, uh, cutting the food uh, this way and you're pushing down without having to have a whole lot of pinching strength in order to let that happen. So we really want to just make that uh, cutting part as easy as possible 
of all the eating devices, this is probably the most popular that I've recommended to people that they actually use um, uh, for a longer period of time. Uh, with built up and grip tools, we often will suggest buying these foam grip tubes. And so what this will allow, you can see there's different holes and different sizes. You can put like a brush or a razor or a pencil, stylus, a spoon uh, in, inside of these and use it to be able to build up your utensil. So kind of similar to this idea, but you can put it on anything and take it on and off as you want to wash your utensil. You can, you can dishwash these as well. Um, I usually end up cutting them in fours or threes off of one of these long tubes and you can put them on a lot of different things. They're relatively cheap and uh, you can get them in different colors so they're not so bright and, and loud, um, but uh, you can get them in black, things like that. So, but really kind of a simple adaptation that allows you to be able to grip onto something without a whole lot of effort uh, and a lot of expense as well. Um, and then lastly would be uh, this doorknob extension. So what it does, it can, it can be really stretched out and put on to most any doorknob. It kind of doesn't look like it would fit, but it actually does. And then it makes any normal turn knob into a, a lever knob, which is a little bit easier for you to grab onto and open and close the door. So it really gives you some simple uh, door opening access adaptations. Another common issue that people come up with is toileting. Uh, and really wanting to be independent of most anything to be independent with the hygiene and the peri hygiene after toileting. Uh, one thing that is liked by almost everyone that gets it is a bidet. And these are toilet seat bidets that can fit over your current toilet seat. There's not a lot of installation required. It uses your current water system. And with these bidet seats, it really can decrease the amount of effort and and sometimes difficult help that is provided by caregivers for peri care after toileting. So installing these, there are, there are a lot of different versions, a lot of different kinds, and we can kind of step you through those as you are looking into them. Um, but most of them work well, and they can really help with that cleanup and with uh, the care that is happening after toileting and really help decrease the amount of effort and, and time that your caregivers are having to do with uh, peri hygiene care. So these are just a few of the tools that are available. And like I'll tell you when you come to the clinic, your job in your homework is to find those things that you're struggling with on a day-to-day -day basis and find out, oh, like this is really hard for me or this is really difficult and I'd really like to be able to do this. And as your OT, we see these a lot. And so we can help you find solutions to those small everyday things that you may think are not that important, but people have come up with solutions to overcome those specific problems. And we can help you figure out, is this worth it? Is this something that's important to me to be able to be independent in? And how can I do this most efficiently and cost effectively? So we want to come up with these solutions for you. And so come to the clinic and come and, and email me and, and you can uh, send messages of things that maybe are coming up for you specifically. And we can come up with these solutions like these or others that will be, help, that will be helpful as you are transitioning and, and progressing with the ALS.